All right, everybody, welcome back to the Jay Walker Show. Today, I am sitting here with the prince of gospel music. From hits, Lily in the Valley, standing in need of prayer. I do. St my Jesus is real. F it, man, I just can't explain it. Everybody, stop what you're doing. Get on your feet right now. Show your love for the Dr. Bishop, Honorable Reverend John P. Key. <laughs> what's up, baby? What's up? <laughs> How you feeling today, Aunt? I'm excellent, man. I'm just <laughs> grateful to be here. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I want to ask you. So you just got a, you just released a new album, the Rats Ellen Project. How, well, how did that come about? Uh, Rats was a father of mine. I don't know if anybody knew, but anybody that really knows me know how much respect I had for him as a father, as a bishop, as a pastor, as a genuine friend, a genuine man of God. And uh, when he passed um, on a Friday night, that Saturday wow. morning, I started working. Wow. And, the tribute record to him, 28 hot tracks, everybody from Gene Moore to Fred Hammond, Dietrich Haddon, everybody's on it. Uh, and Jason Nelson um, and Zaccardi, the list is long, you know, and um, uh, I just love him with my heart. And I wanted this music to be remembered by this generation. It changed my life. It was funky. It was real. It crossed over. Everybody gave Kurt Franklin credit for being the first to cross over. And that's not true. Rance was rocking R&B radio when I was a kid. And um, so um, uh, 28 hot tracks. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, after the production, um, we started trying to determine how we're going to release it. So we're releasing it in uh, uh, increments of seven, five, six, seven songs. But people are going to really enjoy this project, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, uh, that's another question I want to ask you because I, I went back and I, I love listening to your albums. So when I listen to your albums, I noticed that you have like lots of songs rather than other artists. So what? So why why do you put you know a lot, lot of songs out instead of the, the normal ten or twelve songs? Oh, it was well. It also uh, gives you reason that I have over forty three hundred songs unreleased. Wow. And because when I would work on a project, I wouldn't work on 10. I'd work on 25 or I'd work on 30. And then we would have to select and I would end up with 12 out of 16. And everybody was saying, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But um, I was doing it and um, I created a huge catalog, a huge. And then John P. Key is more than just the gospel artist. Excuse me. Um, um, I've done um, uh, movie scores. I've done a lot of TV music. Yeah. So I've just been working for years. I love to work. And I've always been the one that created a catalog to make sure that was just not one hit on a record. I would produce every song like it was ready for radio. And uh, so that's how it came about. So, so you've, I know, you know, who, so who about have you wrote for? I know you, uh, I know you've done a lot uh, of writing. Wow. Um, at 14 years old, I was Phyllis Hyman's wow. uh, music director. I worked with Donald Byrd and the Blackbirds. Um, just so many. So I've been out there. I was actually the musician and um, MD for Miss Black Universe pageants all over the country. Okay. So that's how I got to really get my feet wet and meet so many other artists. Um, uh, we just lost Harry Belafonte. I met him at 15, 16 years old. So um, I've just written for everybody from Vanessa to James Cleveland, Daryl Coley, the Hawkins, uh, Edwin, um man my list is vast it's real long yeah i know man I'm <laughs> back, back street boys <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what inspired you to be a pastor i know that first you, you didn't start out as a pastor you uh, ultimately started out as just an artist and yeah i was reading you went to detroit and you was inspired to be a pastor yeah I, I, um it's funny you bring that up not too many people bring that up i was southfield michigan and um, um, I just wanted to make sure that um, um, my call was in line. And I think I got to a place where I was disturbed. And more than being disturbed, it was the call on my life. You know, it was tugging at me, you know. And um, so I'm in Southfield, Michigan with Mike Brooks, with Young Artists for Christ. And I'm crying out to God, man. And it was an experience in the Red Roof Inn that I'll never forget. So um and the inspiration to become i, I don't know if, if, if i can answer that because i don't i don't think i was inspired to become i think i i i, I yielded to the call 
Wow. You hear me? And um, uh, many people know the story of salvation with John. Uh, one of my buddies was gunned down about four blocks from my church. And uh, I promised God if he got me home safe. That, uh, it's been almost 40 years now. And, and um, I still feel like um, God had a hand on me, even when I was in sin. When we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. I think he had purpose for my life when I was selling that dope for three and a half years in the green store across from the church. So. Wow. Yeah. So now you're back on tour with the Broken Tour. Yeah. So how what is it like touring now? Is it different than when it was touring, you know, maybe 20 years ago? Is it different? Um, you know what? It's 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 good. Um, and people always ask me that as if it's stressful or and not at all, man. I I, I enjoy doing it. Broken is a message after COVID and after um after the pandemic to find the people that are hurting and love on them. And that's what I'm doing. That's 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 it. That's uh, so it's not just a concert where you're experiencing John P. Key's old music. You you actually uh, healing is taking place on this broken tour, man. And uh, I love it. Every city. I'm St. Louis and Cincinnati this weekend. Um, I can't wait to just give that message of hope to the people, man. So I want to ask you this: When is the broken tour coming to Birmingham? <laughs> wow, I came through Birmingham twice last week. Uh, we need to come. I'm going to call. Shout out to my buddy, Pastor Sutton. I'm going to get back to Birmingham soon. Uh, Birmingham has showed me love like never before. Ricky yeah. Smiley is my family. And we used to go and shout out to Grandma. His grandmother was so dear to me. We would go and do concerts in Birmingham from the church house to outside. And Birmingham never fell short of showing <laughs> Uncle John some real love. So, <laughs> be ham. I'm on the way back. <laughs> Oh, we're in the age of documentaries and biopics. Is there a John P. Key biopic or documentary in the work? It needs to happen. You know, a couple more people got to die before I tell my whole story. You know, I don't want to. Uh, my story is intense, and uh, I've got to tell it one day, and I'm, I'm excited about it. It needs to be. Can't be played with. It probably yeah. probably won't be on the Gospel Channel because I got to tell the truth about some things. Yeah, Don P. Key just wasn't an artist starting out. You know, he was the owner of the strip club in D.C. I mean, you just I want to tell the whole thing. And in order to tell the whole story, I, I'm sure grandma might not let the babies watch. But if the story is <laughs> going to come out, we're not going to water it down like I've seen some others or make up stories to make it interesting. I'm going to tell the true John P. Key story. Wow. So what do you think a good network like Netflix? No Lifetime, no BBC. Well, let me tell you something good. It's funny. You, 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 lifetime can't handle my story. Um, I'm producing a movie right now, five scenes from finishing my dad's movie uh, about a young man who gets a record deal in 1947 and um, headed to New York and the Klan shot the tires out of their bus. We shot all those scenes along with my dad's movie. You've got Mahalia Jackson, James Cleveland, the Caravans, and the Dixie Hummingbirds doing a tour. And people say, well, what do they have to do with each other? At the end of the movie, when I was a kid back in Durham, Pastor Shirley Caesar would have these gigantic concerts. So at the end of the movie, they got this gigantic concert in Durham. They bring my daddy and put the group back together. Uh, my son, John John, is playing my father uh, from age 14 to 37. And Bishop Rance Allen, who we're talking about today, wow. plays my father in the movie, and he finished all of his scenes and did an amazing wow. job. That's wow. Gonna be good. I can't wait to see that. That's going to be good. It's going to be good. Wow. So let me ask you this. So when you look, do you think that gospel music has changed from when, when you first started until now? Do you think that? Absolutely. There's no more gospel music. I mean, I don't even know how we can categorize it. You have to go back and snatch those old tunes. And I'm not a hater of the newbies. I think that they are here on purpose and they're doing what they've been commanded to do. My concern is that we that do hold true to the, the, the art of gospel, never forget. This VIP, I'm bringing Ricky Dillard, I'm bringing choirs back into Charlotte uh, for a VIP July 8th, 26th through the 30th. Here in Charlotte, we're gonna. Um, I'm, I'm bringing that old music back, man. It used wow. to work. Choir music works, man. I just saw a guy on um, on um, on Instagram do Jesus is real for Easter uh, choir oh. out west, and I went crazy, man, because it was so good. 
they held it down. So I'm excited about that. So what's your favorite song to perform live in concert? Wow. I'm going to tell so you many. something. This is corny. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot. I just found a song um, the day that I had forgotten about. Um, Standing in the Need of Press it just works every time. And now when we do it live, I do Standing in the Need. And then I go into I Belong to You by Rance, and it's it, it's working real good. Works real yeah. good. Man, I just love your song, Lily in the Valley. I, I just, on, I'm bro. just, I just. <laughs> Come on, bro. And let me say something about that. Being 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 classically trained or, or touching the jazz idiom, whatever you want to call me or whatever, I've been classified as. I always go back or went back. That was my production secret. That's why I think I'm still working while a lot of artists are waiting for their phone to ring. Um, years ago, I would do my music that I enjoyed, if you would. And then I'd go back and do something old for my grandma. Made sure my grandma had at least two hits on every record, you know, wow. something traditional. And it it worked, man. I sing Lily in the Valley now. I don't care where I am. Or if I sing Mansion, I'm a mansion now. People still rock it like it came out yesterday. Yeah. But yeah, man, I, I enjoy good church music. And uh, I gained something or I gleaned something from the late Reverend James Cleveland. Um his ability to keep the house in the palm of his hand. You know, we still do concerts and people stand from, I have to make them sit down. So that's a good thing. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't attribute that to the music as much as I do the spirit of the moment. So people, I just said this before I went on interview with you that um, uh, a John P. Key experience is just that, you know, yeah. we bring worship to the house. We don't beg you to get up because we come to have a good time ourselves. So you join in with me and we have a ball. Oh, uh, you should bring a new life with you when you on, while you're on tour? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm getting ready to do a five city tour. We're doing um five major city video tour where we're doing um all of his. I'm bringing everybody back from Isaac to Lowell. I'm gonna bring everybody. If everybody don't make it to the same city, they will be in a city. So I'm yeah. excited about that. And uh, we're gonna keep the same time stamp, same tempos. So you'll start out watching me in Atlanta. And all of a sudden, you blink your eye in the transition, and I'm in Dallas. So it's going to be good. So I want to ask you this. As an artist, how how have you been able, because I see now a lot of uh, pastors, uh, pa they're pastors and they're artists, so, but you have seemed to maintain both. So how do how have you been able to maintain being an artist, then being a pastor? Um, my infrastructure is good. My family is good. So I don't have to wake up every morning and do like most people create a new identity. I don't have to wake up and create a new profile. I know who John P. Key is. And when you know who you are, you're not tripping, man. Life is just life. So I wake up I and, and then I, this is the way I do. I learned my new word, uh, compartmentalize. I know how to take a month and just do my artwork. I'm just doing my art. I'm just drawing, I'm just painting. I know how to take my season where I'm just fishing and I'm just fishing. I know how to take my season when I'm just working on music. So I, I, I'm really good at the balance. So you say you said everything but pastoring. Now, let me tell you where pastoring fits in. It covers all of that. I love the word of God. I'm constantly studying. I'm constantly preaching in my head. I'm, so I'm never unprepared. I'm doing a series now at my church I identify as, and it's been real good. It's supposed to be one Sunday. It has dribbled into the three Sundays. <laughs> I'll, I'll be teaching it, finishing it again this week. So, so I, I'm I'm balanced as a person, you know, and I'm 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 a happy person, period. So I'm not a frustrated guy. I just and I, and 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 I live life like it's the last day. I'm gonna honor God today because tomorrow's not. Yeah. Oh, as a pastor, how did the pandemic or the COVID pandemic affect church? Well, it didn't catch me by surprise because we were already feeding the hungry. We were already ministering to the neighborhood. So a lot of churches that had no outreach died. Wow. Because it wasn't about the in-person church anymore. You had to have a purpose, if you would. So we handled it. We went outside, brought the speakers outside. And and, and 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 churched on Sundays, you know, uh, we called it pull up and praise. And we didn't wow. miss a beat. Um, I'm back in now and church is packed. 
and we've done no promo. I mean, I, we don't wow. do promo anyway, but there's never been a come. This is John P. Keys, da, 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 da. We don't do that. So being that we were outreach ministry, we were able to go out and get them. So now the church is thriving again, 64 active programs, because we didn't let it die. We didn't let it die. And uh, I'm excited. I'm the only church with an ex-drug dealers association in the church teaching these little young boys how to be entrepreneurs for real. And um, we just, we, we never stopped doing church, you know? So we ministered to the people of God and made it happen. And uh, hey, we survived, man. <clears throat> wow. So I wanted to ask you this. So I saw where you said that you had cleared your $15 million debt. I want to say congratulations. And I also want to say, was that a challenge? Because now when you look at a lot, like we don't know, but a lot of churches that we think are thriving or like this, you know, they're in debt. So was it a challenge to try to pay up that debt? Were you worried or how was that? Let me tell you something, brother. Not only was it not a challenge, it was wow. discipline. I went to my sister maybe six years ago and I said, can you operate uh, many pastors with sell what I'm giving to tell you right now? I said, can you operate this church on three Sundays a month? She paused and said, yeah. I said, do it. Because that fourth Sunday is going to be debt-free Sunday. Every nickel, every dime that's raised on that Sunday will go towards our debt. And when I did that, brother, let me say this to you. When I tell you we paid off everything. Matter of fact, we came out of debt and didn't know it. We were in the middle of the pandemic. Wow. Pull up and praise. And one Sunday, she looked called me in our office and said, Pastor, I need to tell you something. We don't have any more bills, nothing. Everything's paid for. So um, we had um, uh, millions of dollars, man. Um, we worked with our bank over the years, special projects, everything. And every dime, every nickel was paid out. So we're a debt-free church, and I preach debt-free. I can't stand that. And uh, it's, it's working. And here's what's really good about it. <clears throat> Not only did the spirit of no debt fall upon the the household of faith um, over the covenant church, but it fell on the spirit of the people. Wow. So people start working on their personal issues. And that's the way I pastor. Man, if it's good enough for the pastor, it's good enough for you. And I, I don't take a salary. I'm never taking a salary from the church. And, and, and that's not out of order. If you guys are taking care of your pastors, keep doing it. But I've just been so blessed from day one that God has just rained on me because I didn't have the heart to, 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 I don't want to say trick the people because I don't want to accuse other pastors of that, but I've been able to be honorable and honest yeah. in spending finances. And that, that, that didn't, that didn't hurt us at all. Yeah. And you did the Rex Allen project. So should we be expecting any of your music? Just you just put like for you. Just oh you? yeah. That was the deal walking in the door. Shout out to, Ty Scott, Warner, uh, everybody that's involved, uh, Key Music Group. Yeah, John P. Key's coming. He's coming hard. I'm excited about it, too. Yeah, we've wow. got some great music, and uh, we start working on that um, middle of this month. Finish wow. it. Yeah, so I'm 80% done. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming back again. And he's still, John P. Key still sing like he was, he could back in 79. <laughs> That's preserved the vocal really good, and I'm grateful for it. Can you do me a favor? Can you just re-record <laughs> Lily in the Valley and put it on the album? <laughs> I might be your age and say that it's good, man. I mean, we we were able to bless a generation that remembers. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And uh, standing in need of prayer. Jesus is real. Wow. So how did you write these songs? So what, did you just wake up one night and was like, well, music has been a part of me, period. I, I I get angry when I hear writers talk about writer's block and they're not encouraged. Man, I'm encouraged by everything. The slamming of a door, uh, the, the, the a bell in the house, whatever. And what makes me really rejoice is these songs had to be anointed yeah. because I really can't remember times. I remember um, standing in need of prayer I wrote at Charla Reed's mother's house in Oak Cliff, Texas. Um, uh, I remember I was writing it for an artist out of Houston by the name of Gay Arbuckle. Wow. And um, so I remember that one. Um, but I just um, my favorite John P. Key song is uh, Thursday Love. Go check it out. 
Wow. There's a song, um, Google that, Everybody, Thursday Love. Thursday it love. was a season when I was about to give up and give up. I mean, give up. And uh, God gave me those words, those lyrics out on the balcony of the Fat House studio. So certain songs I remember. My favorite mix song is a VIP song called When Morning Comes. So uh, I got a couple of fades out there, but uh, I thank God I embraced the whole catalog. And uh, there was a time I didn't. I wanted the new music. We would practice the new music and go out on the road. And I was literally offended that people were screaming, never shall forget, Jesus is real. <laughs> Yeah, the anointing. They were screaming the old stuff, and I was like, "No!" But I've embraced it in my old age now, and I love doing the songs and love seeing the people fellowship and worship with me. Wow! So, what is your favorite place to perform? Wow, this is gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> Atlanta, Atlanta, man. <laughs> I'm in Atlanta every three weeks. I don't wow. understand it. I'm booked for Atlanta. And then Atlanta's really funny because I'll come to Atlanta and we got a packed house or a packed park. And it's the, that sect of people. And then I'll come back three weeks later. And it's a whole new crew. So maybe I'll get to Atlanta and invite everybody and everybody will come. Wow. So let me ask you this because I, I, know, I know I've seen, you know, online i've read reviews so do you, you think that it is a difference between performing mm -hmm. in a church and an actual venue or an arena don't matter to me that is saying that is saying to some artists it's it's different but um it, i'm so not into john p key so it don't matter if i got a church or or an outside arena or or concert hall it doesn't matter i come for the same purpose every time i walk in the building we're going to bless the Lord in here. So um, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Wow. So when you go on the road, what is one thing that you must have? Like, it's just something that you need to have. Like, I got to have this. I can't go on the road without this. My CPAP machine. I love it. That's my girlfriend. I call her Pap Pap. And look, I don't even need it anymore. I snoring is gone. Well, I was about 163 pounds heavier when I first got on that. So, um, yeah, so I got to have my baby. She got to go with me. Wow. And I know you, you got your black jacket on. So is there a dip? So like, is, do you just feel different when you don't perform without your black jacket? Man, I went somewhere and they didn't have my, <laughs> two weeks ago, they left those somewhere and I didn't have my black jacket. I was upset. That's where I am. Stella Awards, Grammys, wherever I perform from now on, I'm going to have my black on. Yeah, shout out to Don Jackson. My friend offered me the opportunity to open the Stellas this year, and already I'm in Birmingham. Yeah, okay, so let me ask you this. So do you enjoy still performing at the Music Award shows? No. Oh, wow. Not at all. <laughs> That's facts. And please don't edit this out. Okay. Most artists wouldn't dare say that. Not at all. It's just not what it used to be, man. It's just the... More than camaraderie now, it's 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 uh, competition, and uh, I get the respect. I'm not disrespected in any arena, even from the young ones, the newbies, the oldbies, everybody. But um, wow! I, if I do it, my mindset is that I'm going to touch somebody on on TV that's not going to be able to come to the arena or to the concert. So that's the concept that would make me possibly go in. I've ducked too many opportunities. I'm done when it comes to that. So it has to be worth my time. Matter of fact, we're negotiating something yesterday down in Jacksonville, a TV show for, for BET. And they said, well, we already have our band. We just want you to show up. I won't be there. No, I'm like Prince. And my name is Prince. <laughs> when um, I um, come, I got to bring my crew. So, um, yeah. So how did you get the name? How did you get the crown as the Prince of Gossip? They found out my real name. I hid my name for years. I was just John Peaky. And I think <laughs> Brian or his father, Dr. Scott, Leonard Scott, um, interviewed my mom or something. And they let that cat out of the bag. So once they found out my name was legally John Prince Key, mm -hmm. they tagged that Prince on, man. And I've been, I've been stained ever since. <laughs> 
Well, Mr. Key, I want to thank you. So much. I want to thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for sharing your time with me today, man. I can ask you, Key, on the Jay Walker show. Thank you so much, Mr. Key, for coming on. And Jay, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate. It. Wells Fargo lets you know where you stand with your FICO credit score. What if you knew where you stood with everything? Like your future in-laws. Hope you like cats. Uh, I hope your parents like me. <laughs> They're whispering. The kid is like. <laughs> Can we tell I'm allergic? Tears of joy. Welcome to the family. Phew. Like knowing where you stand? When it comes to your credit score, you can with Wells Fargo. At Wells Fargo, direct deposits come up to two days early with early payday. What if everything came two days early? Have a good weekend, Mary. All right now. Have a good weekend. But it's Wednesday. See you Monday. Am I missing something? It's the weekend, baby. See you later. Like getting things two days early? When it comes to payday, you can with Wells Fargo. What are you doing this weekend? Card from Capital One gives you premium travel benefits, like two times miles on every purchase. The noise canceling. You're being too loud. Thank you. Good choice. Ooh. My lucky number. Earn five times miles on flights. Enjoy your stay. Going up. And ten times miles now. on hotels through Capital One oh. Travel. Plus, get access to over 1,300 airport lounges. White wine, please. And maybe see the one and only Taylor Swift. Capital One. What's in your wallet? My name is Jorge Gaviria, and I'm the founder of Macienda. We partner with traditional farmers in Mexico to bring their heirloom corn products to top restaurants and home kitchens around the world. I chose my Spark Cash Plus card from Capital One because I earn unlimited 2% cash back on everything I buy. With no preset spending limit, my purchasing power adapts to meet my business needs. And I reinvest my 2% cash back to help grow our business with new products, like our tabletop masa mill. Now our customers can make their own world-class masa in any kitchen. My Spark Card helps me fulfill my mission of bringing masa to the masses. What's in your wallet? When you're busy dealing with groceries, you can miss a few things. See, you missed that, didn't you? With Walmart Plus in home, an associate delivers and puts away your groceries, whether you're home or not. Hi, hey, Mike. No tips, no markups, no worries. The child gets Walmart groceries from the car. Elsewhere, a mom helps her son with homework. If you shop at Walmart, you get it. Kids do crafts. You save on what you need. A boy stores his piggy bank without skimping on the things you love. A family gathers for a meal. You know how to spend a little less. An older couple hold hands. To get a little more. To make life a little better. Walmart. Save money, live better. A child gets Walmart groceries from the car. Elsewhere, a mom helps her son with homework. If you shop at Walmart, you get it. Kids do crafts. You save on what you need. A boy store.